In another digital comp video, we were looking at how we can use bolsters under the apex of the convexity of a scoliotic curve to try to open up, stretch that scoliotic curve. Now I'd like to point out there's another technique we can use if we have what's called a flexion break table. Now this table you can see here has a break between the thoracic piece, so to speak, and the abdominal pelvic piece down here. And this can open up if you see this right here. Now this is normally called a flexion break table because this was originally used for the clients to be face down. So if they're face down prone and you bring the table up like this, it brings them into flexion. The idea being to uh, stretch the posterior tissues of their spine. But now we have Catherine, our model, lying on her left side. So in effect, it's a lateral flexion break feature that we're taking advantage of. Now, Catherine does not have a scoliotic curve, but we're using her as a model to demonstrate how this might work. So if she had a scoliotic curve, and right now we have the break in the table right around T12 L1, right around the thoracolumbar junction. So let's say that she has a scoliotic curve with its apex right at T12 L1. We place her so that the convexity is down toward the table. The concavity is up toward the ceiling. So what we're looking at is we have a scoliotic curve in this shape and a scoliotic curve like that is actually a curve of right lateral flexion. But because scoliotic curves are named for the convex side, we call it a left scoliotic curve. So if we have a curve of right lateral flexion, what we would want is to bring her at this break point in the table at the apex around that point as a fulcrum point into left lateral flexion. Now this is so much easier than working with bolsters because I can set the degree of left lateral flexion and do it simply by a foot pedal and maybe I let her stay here for 10 to 30 seconds and accommodate to it and when she's comfortable if I were working with bolsters, I'd have to have her get up, take a bolster out, put a larger bolster in, but with the lateral flexion break feature, all I need to do is just press on the foot pedal a bit and I can bring her up some more and let her stay there until she's comfortable. And then I can bring her up even more. Make sure she's comfortable at each level. You never want to try to challenge the client's body too much. You don't want to force a stretch force into their body. You need to give them time to accommodate it to, to accommodate to it. The last thing we want is a very quick stretch and a muscle spindle reflex and the resultant muscle spasm. Now, Catherine is a dancer. She's very flexible. I can bring her up to the maximum lateral flexion break of the table and she's still perfectly fine here. You're comfortable? Okay, you are, good. Okay, so we can do this this way, but we can also mix this with using a bolster. So I'm going to have you just lift up a little bit, make sure the pillow doesn't fall, and I'll put this smaller bolster, but a firm one, right underneath the break of the table, the apex of the curve, and you can feel this pushing up on you more here, can't you? Yeah. Yes, you can. So this would increase the stretch to the scoliotic curve even more. We have the lateral flexion break feature with a bolster. So we could certainly put an even larger firmer bolster here and we could keep going until we reach that tissue tension barrier of her tissues where we're now really challenging them to stretch beyond that point. But again, whenever we're doing clinical orthopedic manual therapy work like this, we always want to make sure that we kind of sink in slowly or gradually increase the stretch forces when we're doing a stretch to give them time to accommodate to it. And it's amazing the depth of work we can accomplish when we work slowly with how we introduce the force. So this is using a lateral flexion break table. Can you just lift up a little bit and I'll take the bolster out. We had a bolster there. Now the bolster is gone, but you can see how the lateral flexion break right here does left lateral flexion around the fulcrum point, which would be the apex of the convexity 
of the scoliosis. We very nicely, very logistically easily can stretch, focus our stretch to a scoliotic curve. And let's take a quick look at this plastic flexible skeleton to see the mechanics of what we were just showing with our lateral flexion break feature to open up a scoliotic curve. On this skeleton, I set up a scoliotic curve whose apex is right around T12 L1. Uh, the deformity curve is in right lateral flexion, so the concavity is on the right side, but the convexity is on the left. By definition, this is a left scoliotic curve at the thoracolumbar junction. I will place the client, the skeleton down, sideline on the left side because we want the convexity to be face down against the table. I will set the convexity to be right at the break in the table right here and then I let their body weight go down theoretically there and now as the table goes up the body weight keeps pushing down around that apex and you can see that the curve straightens out. So this is the idea of using a lateral flexion brake feature on a flexion brake table to very easily open up, focus our stretch at a scoliotic curve.